Y'all ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Face the east for the Morning American Prayer. Morning American Prayer.
all this specificity of the more science people of America, then you may uh, initial uh, to name of faithful husbands must support their wives and children. Wives, you must obey your husband and take care of the children and look after the duties of the household. Sons and daughters must obey their mothers and fathers and be industrious and become a part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. The divine covenant is from the Holy Prophet Mubadu Ali through the guidance of his Father, God Allah. Mubadu Ali, founder of Moorish American Prayer, uh, Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is the uh, protector, my guidance, my surveillance, by night and by day, through the Holy Prophet, Noble Glory, Amen. And more science people of America's own office of Noble Glory, Chicago, and Noble Glory. Hello. Hello. Right. Okay. Uh, if everybody can turn into chapter 21, I am in around. Should be uh, page 32. Right. Okay, uh, chapter 21 Marriage Instructions for Man and Wife from the Noble Prophet. Give ear, fair daughter of love, to the instructions of prudence and let the precepts of truth. Seek deep in thy heart. So shall the charms of thy mind and luster, luster to the elegance of thy form and thy beauty, like the rose it resembleth, shall retain its sweetness with its, when its bloom is withered. And the spring of thy youth and the morning of thy days, when the eyes of men gaze on thee with delight, and nature whispereth in thine ear the meaning of their looks. Ah, hear with caution their seducing words. Guard well thy heart nor listen to the soft uh, persuasions. Remember thou art made man's re reasonable companion, not the slave of his passion. The end of thy being is not merely to gratify his loose desire, but to assist him in the toils of life. To soothe his heart with thy tenderness and recompense his care with soft endearment. Who is, it, is she that winneth the heart of man? It subdueth him to love and reigneth in his breath. And I wanted to pause right there because, um, well, first off, when we're, we're giving these instructions, one of the things that we're to do is to, um, to pick ourselves up and to pick up our own community. And so in these, within these marriage instructions, right there where you have um, number four, where, verse four, where it's saying, who is she that winneth the heart of man? We're thinking... Um, for the most part, in mainstream society, you know, with Instagram, with all of the things that we get bombarded with, um, especially for women, we're not aiming to win the heart of man, right? We're aiming at the lower self. And when you look at uh, where it says to win at the heart of man, if you um, turn into the Quran questions, if you don't have the questions, I'll just read it to you. There's something special about the heart, and this, he's not just saying this for any reason. In the Quran questionnaire, uh, verse 1 through 4, it says, Who made you? Allah. Number two, who is Allah? Allah the Father of the universe. Three, can we see him? No. Four, where is the nearest place where we can meet him? In the heart, right? So he's telling you you can meet Allah in the heart. And if you look at the heart, right, that's special because... Um, well, the prophet used to hand out cards that said that he was an Egyptian native, right? And if you look at ancient Egyptian wisdom, the heart was the seat of the soul, right? Um, if you look at stolen legacy, uh, hang on, I'm going to read something to you. Stolen legacy by T.M. James. I believe he's... Okay, yeah, from the Egyptian book, The Dead, he's speaking about how the soul has nine different parts. And it's talking about the Ka and the Ba. The Ba 
the heart soul which dwells in the car, sometimes alongside it. And then um, there's another part called the ab, the ab, and that's also the heart. So there's like four or five different components of the heart that are tied to the soul. And that's within ancient Egyptian wisdom. But also, when you look into the ancient Vedas, the Hindus, right? And the Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart. And this is, uh, this is Lord Krishna. He's saying the Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, or Arjuna, and is directed, directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy. Right, so he's speaking like, you know, this is where, this is where God is, you know, incarnated inside of you, operating your body, or your, your corpus, your machine. And um, that's also referred to as the Anahata in Sanskrit. That's the heart chakra. And it's saying the same thing. Um, the ancient Aztecs also said this as well, the heart of the seed of the soul. Also, within embryos, the heart is the first organ to form, right? So this is when you're first coming into being. Your heart is formed first, okay? And the heart also is where the upper and lower chakras meet, okay? So this is where the spiritual and the material are coming to meet. And so this is what um, the prophet is telling you in the marriage instructions for women to win the hearts of man. So he's not just talking about love and attraction and desire. He's saying speak to the inner God within that man, right? And so if you look at that with society, you can see that this is a huge, this is a big deal, you know, with how we conduct ourselves. It's also why it is important, even if we already know this, even if you're practicing it, to get this knowledge and to make sure that we're passing this on to others and living this by example, because this is a big thing. This is one of the biggest reasons why our society is like it is, because what happens when you're only picking a woman based off of her shape, you know, and then you procreate it with her. So now you brought children in, into play. With someone that you don't want to be with, she probably don't want to be with you either. So now, you know, you've got a whole situation, and this is, ba this is basically... You know, this is a huge problem. There's an entire industry built off of our weakness, which is like child support, you know, which is saying, like, say we're creating children with people just based off of tra physical attraction, animal attraction. It doesn't take anything to win the lower, the lower self, right? We used, to, um, we used to breed pit bulls, right? So we, we breed dogs. First time I had my female out there, she, like, I didn't have the male around her. So she's out there by herself, and the dog just jumps over the fence, you know. So my first litter was, you know, <laughs> some puppies I didn't want. But the thing is, he just, he's going all over the neighborhood doing this, right? Any female that's in heat, right? And so it doesn't really take anything to win the lower self. It's not even an accomplishment, but that's what society is, is, is coming. It's, it's like, especially with the likes, likes and Instagram likes, this is like really big. So this is a, a huge problem, and this is why it's being fed, because as long as we're being fed to breed off of our weaknesses, we're giving other people a chance to rule over us. We're giving them money because they built entire industries off of this. Okay, so we're keeping ourselves down. And so this is a big deal, and it's easy to just overlook that stuff. You know, but this is it. So it takes nothing to appeal to the low self. That's not an accomplishment, but we're praising people off of that. You know, people are getting fed that. Young girls are getting fed this now to appeal to that, you know. Show off your body, you know, and win some type of, you know, I don't know, just likes, just, you know, Favorite. people. Say what? Favorite. Yeah, so people are getting fed this and, you know, this is pumping people up. And so it's kind of just going in the opposite direction of where it needs to go. But as long as it's going like that, we're going to be out of order, right? That breeds all types of problems later on down the road. All right? And so I just wanted to emphasize the importance of that. All right? And, um, okay, next it says, Lo, yonder she walketh and made in sweetness that subdueth them to love and reigneth in his breast. Lo, oh, 
excuse me, her hand seeketh employment, her foot delighteth not in gaining abroad. She is clothed with meekness, she is fed with temperance. Humility and meekness are as a crown of glory circling her head. On her tongue dwelleth music, the sweetness of honey floweth from her lips. Decency is in all her words, and her answers are mildness and truth. Submission and obedience are the lessons of her life, and peace and happiness are her reward. Before her steps walketh prudence, and virtue attendeth at her right hand. Her eyes speaketh softness and love, but discretion with the scepter sitteth on her brow. The tongue of her licentious of the licentious is dumb in her presence. The awe of her virtue keepeth in silence. That's a look that word of licentious. That's the people who are promiscuous and unprincipled in sexual manner. They, they know it's just off of her aura, how you carry yourself not to even approach you like that. Right? Who scandal is busy and the fame of her neighbors is tossed from tongue to tongue. If charity and good nature open not her mouth, the finger of silence resteth on her lip. Her breast is the mansion of goodness, and therefore she seeketh no evil of others. Happy were the man that should make her his wife. Happy the child that should call her mother. She presideth in the house, and there is peace. She commandeth with judgment and is obeyed. She ariseth in the morning. She considers her affairs and appointeth, appointeth to everyone the proper business. Kind of how it is in our house. <laughs> okay. The care of her family is her whole delight. To that alone she applieth her study and elegance with the frugality is seen in her mansion. The prudence of her management is an honor to her husband. He heareth her praise with a secret delight. She informeth the minds of her children with wisdom. She fashioneth their manners from the examples of her own goodness. The words of her mouth is the law of their youth. The motion of her eye commandeth their obedience. She speaketh, and the servants fly. She pointeth, and the thing is done. For the law of love is in their hearts, and her kindness adds wings to their feet. In prosperity she is not puffed up. In adversity she healeth the wounds of fortune with patience. The troubles of her husband are alleviated by her counsels and sweetened by her endearments. He putteth his heart in her bosom and receiveth comfort. Happy is the man that has made her his wife. Happy is the child they call her mother. And so, um, yeah, that's really all that I wanted to read or speak on today. Um, anybody have any questions about that at all? Truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah. And I say that because it's easy for someone on the outside looking in to see that to a child, the mother is the most important thing, person, anything in their world. And that's something that's not necessarily taught. That's something that a child doesn't necessarily even understand on their own. But it, it's just the natural occurrence of things. Um, but us in this imposed society are led or ruled or whatever, however you want to call it by a matriarch or a patriarch. So what it does is it keeps us in the confused state. You know, we think that to be a man is to turn away from our mother and go out there and just make stuff happen. Yeah. Right? But also we see that in nature just like the child to a mother, even the, even the adult man to his mother he cannot resist or turn her away. She is the most powerful thing in his life. Just her words, just any instruction that comes from her tongue is the most important thing to him. If she's in any kind of pain, there's an involuntary feeling of that pain on any of her children, which are her extremities. It's the most powerful thing in, that we learn from the beginning. 
about our connection to our world, which is our mother. But this society gives us these fictions that there's a superman, or, you know, I'm the man of the house, I wear the pants, or, you know, I'm in charge, or shut up, speak, spoken to, you know, all of these strong, carnal, patriotic things and um, actions that we're seeing and being taught to uh, appreciate and repeat, and it just confuses the nature. Part of the destruction of our people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because even as fathers, I see fathers teaching their sons, you know, don't be a mom boy. Mm -hmm. You know, don't so, well, let's really define what that means. Yeah. And so I hear what you're saying. You know, the son needs the mother. The son really needs the mother or or that's right. right. Our territory. Um, now they can find their way. Because I'm, I'm sure that I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of mother and sons out here. Oh, sure. Wow. Wow. But the natural occurrence of things is we're we're totally or constantly bombarded with ways to refuse, refute, or deny the matriarch, mm -hmm. and we're rewarded with uh, the patriarchy, which is a, a position of power, not not divine power but the position of power, or, or the illusion of a power. And, and we're drunk off of that. And, and when, you, when it comes to individuals who don't want to go that route, and kind of want our women to be held above and beyond, and to put them in their proper place, of, of you know, their proper glorious place in our, in our trinity, just, just as minimal as our trinity, they get laughed at, they get ridiculed, they get mocked, they get, they get shunned. And, it's, it's just the truth is stranger than fiction. Wow. And, um, I think, like, on T789, you know, the girl Lee is speaking about the women being noble. Like, today, there's a lot of women, like, you know, like you see on social media or TV and you know, a lot of uneducated mothers, young mothers, you know, came from the crack era and, you know, just fatherless women who are doing the opposite of being noble because, number one, a lot of them don't know better. Number two, they never had a, a good example, you know, of a noble woman, the place of a woman and how high the place of a woman is. So when we say place of a woman, everyone's like, oh, put the woman down. No. Place of a woman is at the top. You know that that's the creator. You know the bear of children, and that's why I was Brother Rosie was saying like sons and daughters. Like we have a connection to our mothers, like because they brought us into this world. You know everyone is here because of a mother. You know, and you know we have to. That's why like on on the uh, 101, it shows that we are holding. The yeah. woman, yep. mm -hmm. yeah, so you know, speaking about too. just holding the woman, and that picture is is enormous. You know, you don't even have a, there's no words that can explain. You know what was happening in this era of time, and it's still happening today with our women. She has to be picked up and freed from all the cares of the world and put back into a proper place and when that happens then our nation will flourish again. Exactly. That's that's the last thing I wanted to say before I turn it over to Flora. Like just what she said, you see on the woman it says um humanity mm -hmm. and then um he's he's lifting her, you know, from drowning in the cares of the world. Right? That's what the, the sea or the ocean is. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's what all this is about and um this can be twisted, like what I just read, the marriage instructions for men and women to seem like it's old-fashioned, it's putting the woman down or something like that, when it's obvious that it's just the opposite, you know, and we have to lift up the woman, or, you know, we'll still be in the same predicament. There's no way we can, you know, uplift ourselves if our, if our women aren't noble and upstanding, you know, and compensated. It's not going to work, right? That's the first university. The first school that you're in is right inside the womb, right? So we have to do that. It brings it back too to to the heart, yeah. Because like you, like like you alluded to, um, our our children 
are connected to their mothers because she bore them. And and, and, the, and the one thing I found when raising my children and now my grandchild and all the nieces and nephews and other infants and ch children I've held, if you put that child's ear to the heart, it'll be at their most at relaxed state. It'll be it'll be it'll be that protection and that of which they know the mother's heartbeat. That's the that's the original sound of comfort that that child has, and they never lose that, and they're always finding their way back to that heartbeat. It all starts in the heart. Right. Right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the Imhotep Institute. And um, after that, we'll meet the uh, proclamation. Islam family. Islam. We want to thank you for coming out today. Um, you know, the messenger comes in, in different forms, and today we're going to bring a health message. You know, uh, my name is Musara Lawson. This is my lovely wife, divine wife, Amani Lawson. And uh, we've been part of health and wellness, at least I have since uh, childbirth. And my wife, when I met her, she was always on the same plane of eating well for her family training and so forth. So we'd like to share some. Techniques and information uh, that we have uh, used in practice with the family today. Um, the M. Hotep Institute was my wife's grandchild. Yeah, I just came along with it, and we have a balance of the male and female uh, human body. And just we want to talk about what we eat today. And today, the topic is food combinations. There's good combinations, and there's bad combinations. As we all know, when we were born, you know, we were put to the breast, as the brother mentioned, and that was the God-given nutrition coming from the mother at that point. But as we grew older, depending on the opportunities that our mothers had, we either got off God's food and went on to man's food. And this is what we're talking about uh, today, uh, the balance and food combinations, good and bad, for better you. Uh, the purpose of food, anybody want to chime in on that? What do you think the purpose of food is? Energy. For um, information. Nutrition. Nutrition, information. Basically, uh, the first thing is to live. You know, uh, once we come out of the womb, you know, we're looking for that nourishment, and without it, we perish. Without air, we die in three days. Without water, it's three days. So it's basically to, to live. Uh, nutrition, as, as the brother mentioned, uh, is very important because inside of these bodies, there are many organs, and each organ needs different things. So if we don't give it the right nutrition, that organ is going to be lacking, and eventually, it's going to try to survive itself, and that's why we have disease inside the body. You know. So nutrition is very important. You might say, what type of nutrition? You know, that's another thing that we need to really define what the food manufacturers tell us is nutrition may not be nutrition. Uh, and the body, the body heals itself. You, know, you get a cut. You know, you may put a band-aid on it, you know, you scrape your knee, and in a couple of days you see that scab, and all of a sudden the scab is gone, and it's healed. You know, we're designed to heal ourselves. You know, and unfortunately, you know, there's all kinds of things at the drugstore they want to put on, but basically a little air, clean up the wound, and the body will take care of itself. And a real pet peeve of mine is right here, number five, with uh, God made specific food for man, for the birds, for the animals. But man eats just about everything on the planet. You know, that's not God's way. So you're saying the birds eat bird feed? Exactly. The gorilla eats leaves and fruits. You know, uh, they don't go to McDonald's or Burger King. <laughs> Or stick and shake. Yeah. Yeah. 
Exactly. And we eat them. We eat the animals. We eat their food, eat them. That's right. Yeah. Right. And, and that is not what the Creator put us down here for. You know, we've lost our way, as the brother mentioned earlier, not only with the nutrition, but just the way of life. Um, let's talk about air. You want to add to that? Well, this, this particular slide talks about the types of food. And most people don't think of air as food. Do you think it's food? It's not called breatharian, right? Right. Right. So yeah. food, our body, we have to get energy from somewhere, right? And it's not only food. It's that what you said. So we're getting energy from the air that we breathe. If we didn't have air, right? And then there's water. Um, what do we, we research that 85% of our body? Well, yeah. 70 to 85 percent of our body is moisture, is water. You know, and another thing we found out that overnight, in 24 hours, we lose 80 ounces of water, which I didn't know. You know, Just overnight. You know, remember Dick Gregory drink, you know, eight bottles of water or glasses of water a day. However, that's just the minimum. You know, uh, you're supposed to drink, you know, half your body weight in ounces. So since we are water. That should be our number one so-called food and nutrition, is water. Because most people, when they're thirsty, they're dehydrated already. When you feel that you need water, it's water. If you notice one person goes to a hospital emergency room and they decide to keep them, what's the first thing they do? Yeah. And most of us are dehydrated. Simple test for that, sense your skin. Sensitive. If it stays up there, you're dehydrated. If it stays cinched. But if it springs right back, you're probably getting enough water, but still continue to hydrate. And, and you know, we, we reason why we're, you know, uh, dehydrated is because we have all these commercial drinks, you know, from soda pop to, to sports drink to five hour energy, all these other things aren't doing a water cut. All those other drinks. So starch is digested in alkaline substance. 
So you should eat starch first. If you do have deep meat, meat is digested in the gut and the stomach. That's where you don't have to. Hey, go to guess.
um, fruits, vegetables, these are combinations that a lot of people don't understand. Because fruits are easy digestion. And sugar, you know, is natural. An apple, a pear, a orange, strawberry, etc. You know, he said, first, first thing in the morning, first meal, you break the fast, have some fruit, match the meal. You want to pick up on the combination? Really watch that. They, they put soy like um, 
I mean, products over is like soy and everything. Like, it's just like, you know, it don't have to be vegan or nothing. Just, you know what I mean? So it's like kind of like, you can see the big flower, you know, the chances. Yeah, there you go. You can sort of take it over. So that's what this chart is about. Do your best to start looking at when you go to eat, what are you providing? Because then at the end of this presentation, which we don't have a few more slides, we're going to show an eight-minute video of a doctor who kind of backs this up and then gives you some ideas of how to, to properly follow it. So it's hard to go wrong. It's so hard to go wrong. I'm making dinner after this, right? <laughs> <laughs> It was it was going to be salmon and asparagus, right? <laughs> I know this for your chart is an excellent combination. Right? <laughs> However, <laughs> if we wanted to add a bread or a potato with that, it's like yeah, that's excellent. If you're just talking about your asparagus, but bro, I'm having yeah. you're having salmon, and that's not a good combination for the star. So it's like yeah, uh, how am I going to supplement? That's well, do you need to? Um, I don't, I don't, I'm just, I'm just thinking outside the box because when I, I'm like a, I'm a very sharing person, so, especially when I'm cooking or giving someone something, so that means I'm like, I have to have the mind of everybody, in my, or everybody's body in mind when I'm cooking, so for me, I don't, I don't mind not having bread, like, I, I don't yeah. need it, but somebody else might grab some bread, and to me, and, and, I mean, even though it's not uh, purposeful, yeah. I'm contributing to a destructive action, right. you know, it, it, uh, you know, kind of off, off, the, off the beat, yeah. but doing it, especially since now that I am conscious to it, yeah. I know I'm doing it now, right. or that I'm accomplished, and so it, it kind of bothers me, so I'm thinking, how do I, you know, like, <laughs> it's like a whole other no way, way of living. Right. Without being cursed out. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah. or, or like, you know you, you know you don't need to have bread. Right. I don't oh. have my bread. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do I want to do now? So. You know, you're going to be able to blow in some, but you're not going to blow in some. I'm working on these seven. We, we always have, you know, the so-called Thanksgiving. I'd like to give a new name for that. But <laughs> over at our house, and we have about 40, 50 people there, right? Mm -hmm. And and everybody brings something, but you know, bro, you just have to say, I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to be an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm
Um, and we had uh, Brother and Sister L with a come and visit as well. We all tested our acidity. You know, you can test your acidity to see if you're active or alcohol. Um, so we might do that workshop again and invite you all to come. Yeah, so, um, so it's a sign of disease if, if you show too much acid. And it is no small wonder that this readily happens with the mixed eater. And he or she fills the stomach daily with meat, starch, wheat, fruit, etc., and all at the same time. And so that's why the body just goes into an acid state. Because in the body, you've got to do something with all this, so let's just become a good. With all that we, I don't mean to interrupt. No, I'm sorry. No, you're not. Uh, with all that we know today, um, leading up to today, you know, in, in the 30s, you know, when they put a stick of butter on everything and they cooked with lard, and, you know, all these other things, you know, we, we look at to now and we kind of we kind of know that's not good for us now. It was a public service announcement or a public concern. Yeah. Now that we have the, all these fast food restaurants that we're used to, all of the ways that we're mixing and matching our foods. Um, that are that are not correct for our body that we know about now. Shouldn't this be like, and there are people who are coming out like the Dr. Seven and, and like the other people who have wrote books and done workshops and other things that want to change people's kind of behavior and let them bring more consciousness to what they're eating and digesting. Even um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad came out with a book, Eat to Live, you know. I mean, every, we're all on it. We know we know what's getting at us, but we're still faced with ch the cheap yeah. food that, that's readily available. Starch, I should say, yeah. that's readily available. We know the grocery store is like 10% real food. Mm -hmm. You know, like all of these things that we should be able to have one voice as a as a community or a country to say no more, mm -hmm. bring us public service announcement and, 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 and push for change instead of you know having individuals like us on the ground trying to, you know, tell people these things while they're still serving it like it's all good. Mm -hmm. You know, if we were still getting a big stick of butter and everything, it would be a huge cholesterol problem. And all these other groups are starting to find out that, you know, milk doesn't even have calcium. God, you know, it's, it's all like... We, we have all the evidence we need to suggest that they're trying to kill us or they're keeping us stressed or they're keeping us sick just so we'll keep flooding them, hospitals, flooding them, drug stores, in right. ease, you know, <laughs> looking for a pill to cover up the symptoms and that they eat us away slowly but surely. But this, is, this is just something I think that we, we all need to start That's right. beating down the government's door about or whatever. Sure. Sure. I, I agree. I agree totally with you. And I was just thinking, like, yo, like, this going to be my, like, when the Ramadan comes, this going to be my first one. So, I, I and I, I fasted before, before this, whatever. So, I understand that when you start fasting and you're in a constant state of fast, you eat less. Like, when you, like, like, when you come off, you eat less, like, than you would have dead. And the, the reason I'm bringing that up is because we are pro, pro primed all day to eat. You feel you gotta eat at least five times a day. When your body, when I was fasting or whatever, and I was like on work or whatever, so it's like I don't need that much energy. You feel me? Then when I do go to eat, I'm doing smoothies, salads, and stuff, so I'm getting straight up nutrients. You feel me? Right. So now I can operate more, you know, more than better because I, I remember when I, I eat meat now, but when I didn't eat meat, I could totally tell the difference or whatever. So the whole way thing, because they're gonna like, it, they gonna give us the option to kill ourselves. We gotta come back and self-control. I know fasting at least uh, helps self-control the stomach. Mm -hmm. The stomach, you know, it, a lot of people is operating off the stomach. You know what I mean? Because it's right. a basic entity. How I'm gonna live? You know what I mean? So, but once we got down under control, you know, the lower self is part of the lower self, right? right? So, right. when we get down under check, you feel me? And fasting is like, all right, no, you don't need that. You know, right. like the internal kind of dialogue you gotta have. You don't need that. You be all right. I like I'm a observer and I like to talk about solutions. Mm -hmm. So with all this being said, in every state, well, every city, there's something called a landmate. 
And if a group of people get together and it's still a certain way about food or whatever, you can kind of write up a proposal and send it to the land bank and you can choose land for mm -hmm. free mm -hmm. as long as you do what you say you're going to do. <laughs> now, we want to have a community garden mm -hmm. so that we could grow our food. We can do that. Right. It's not like we're slaves to the market. We're right. slaves to the McDonald's. We can actually do something about it. You know, it takes time, but it, it can happen, and, and we can do it. Yeah. That's something we can do because, like, we, we have the right to our religious mm -hmm. society to practice and do, you know, how we can be taken upon. So, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Going back a step about the protein, when, when we are born, the body only needs 5% protein. That protein thing is from the food industry. Mm -hmm. Marketing is like milk. We need protein. We do not need more than 5%. If a baby can only have 5%, that's all we need. So we don't need that T-bone steak and protein shakes. And especially, uh, remember, where is the protein coming from? Because you know, soy is genetically modified now. 90% of it. So if you're not getting organic vegetables, organic soy, or organic fed, then you're getting GMOs. And the brother's talking about, you know, um, coming off a of fat, and I don't need that anymore. What happens in your fat, all the chemicals that the food manufacturers put in so you can eat more affects your brain, your upper body, your higher self. The hypothalamus tells you when you're hungry, when you're thirsty, what's hot, what's cold, etc. So when that fast is over, you have detox, and those chemicals are out, and your hypothalamus is working properly. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the fast food, it's in the bread, it's in the meat. And the creator knows this new thing we found about the impossible burger. Oh, yeah. If you haven't checked that out, check it out. It tastes like meat. There's no like, not, not taste like meat, but does it like, you know how some people, because I like the grillers, I like them. Yeah. What is it? Like, how is it impossible? Go ahead, my bad. Well, it's, it's, it's the Impossible Burger, there's an Impossible Food Company in California. And they're trying to make burgers and everything else taste like the real thing, but not use the beef and so forth. You know, so it's all pretty made much made use, all made in a laboratory. And it's made from soybean uh, root, which again, remember, nine percent of soybean is genetically modified. So you're eating chemicals. So just to make it it's already here. It's in Columbus. Yeah, there's a couple restaurants that have. Yeah. So so you buy it or not? Like, no. If you're eating me, well, that was the jet. That, that's just that just shows that you know how much of a of cattle and sheep we are as a as a whole. Because they're like, hey, we got this new thing. We've got this bright shiny label on it. Mm -hmm. Don't you want to eat it? Right. And people are well, we just up here. and take our money. We're we'll put it here. Just leave it here. You're gonna eat it regardless. Go <laughs> so on YouTube. Put in Impossible Burger, and you'll see. I mean, it's a huge industry. There's, there's, yeah, there's one that actually takes you into their lab. Into laboratory. Yeah. And when you see how they're putting this together, the body is not going to identify what it is. But okay. And so what does the body do with that? It starts to build. They're saying a lot of this is the reason why there's so much density. And there's so much OPC. The body's going to fight it. Because it's an alien. It's an alien. And platelet counts are going to spiral. White blood cell counts are I mean, certain things that we're hit with, either fire flight, you know, and a lot of my things, I think like the X-Men and all that stuff is real, like, <laughs> we, we are X-Men, exactly. we are X-Men, right. yeah. you know, we just lost our way, we 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 got to go back to that, um, cellular energy, that's what food is all about, you know, uh, taking, um, in good stuff over here and working to get energy and here's our DNA and it keeps our DNA the way the creator wants it. We are 
morphing into something else to help all this other stuff we're chasing in. You know, right. uh, we're going back to being giants. You know, the the age of reporters it's flipping. You can see it. People are more conscious. You know, as brother said, we're here talking about natural eating and so forth. Uh, the food industry is noticing because there's more health food quote sections. You guys still read everything, even in a health food store. Don't trust that everything healthy is not. You got to make money. You know, so uh, it is a change, and it's a generational change. But it has to start with us, our children, our grandchildren, great grandchildren, etc. One or two of them is going to pick it up and take the fall. Not everybody, but you'd hope one or two to move it on. Yeah, I'm one of four, the oldest of four, that try to be an example for my brothers and sisters eating healthy, doing the right thing, etc. And they all passed away of some strange illness. And they're all younger than me. You know, so it's a matter of, you know, heeding the message. If you know better, you do better. So on this slide, keep in mind that your cell is what's going to produce your energy. There are actually ten processes. When you eat your food, and your food goes down, the stomach processes it. There's ten steps that the cell goes through to take that food. Once that energy is in that cell, it produces an ash. And guess what that ash is? That rust in that cell. That ash is actually carbon carbon. That's you. Right? Six, six, six. And that would determine whether or not you're going to have a good ash down here, you're going to have good energy. But if you need all of this, you're going to have a pretty bad ash down oh, here. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know what the hell it is. Yeah, I know what the hell it is. Oh, no. Oh, no. Something that was shot. Nothing that had a mama. Right? That friend said, I don't know anything that had a mama. Right? So, and then what does that turn into? It turns into our DNA. So, a good thing that we do is that, you know, a lot of people say, well, I got that I got it from my mama, and my mama got it from my daddy, and her daddy, and like, a cold I don't believe that. that. that I don't believe that. I went to the doctor, they diagnosed me with diabetes, uh -huh. and I picked up this manual, and it says, it said diabetes is hereditary amongst uh -huh. African Americans. And I'm uh -huh. like, okay, right. let's look at the continent Africa. Mm -hmm. Con in Africa and all the existence of diabetes, which is only like what 30 years old or something like that. Yeah. They've got like a point zero zero seven percent on the whole continent. Exactly. And you telling me that the copper color people here, mm -hmm. it's just something that's just that yeah. God just yeah. blesses yeah. with. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, on the other side, she said, that uh, your genetics. Loads the gun, your lifestyle pulls the trigger. Got it? Yep. Yeah, it might be in your genetics, but it's how you live your lifestyle is going to determine whether or not that's That's huge. Because while I was in the military, yeah. all 11 years, good bill of health, and you're going to get checked twice a year. Yeah. So as soon as I got out of the military, and I just started eating what was available, what was right. cheapest, what I could afford, whatnot. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm just full of sugar, you know, yeah. and full of disease. Exactly. And I noticed in my change of my diet from then to now, mm -hmm. I noticed that I'm not completely off of meat, mm -hmm. but I'm significantly, I'm, I'm not eating it significantly, I'm eating it significantly less than what I'm eating. Mm -hmm. No, I'm eating bread. And no, 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 red meat. meat. Red meat, yeah, I mean, it's still a little red meat. It's still a lot of fish mm -hmm. but uh, and chicken. Yeah, it's, the, it's the menace, but I do notice that when I do go for the salad, I, I do eat a lot of salad, but now I got this chart. I got to start picking it apart, but I, I, what, I, what I'm getting at <laughs> the more the more I eat to uh, to uh, sustain with vegetables, the better I feel. Oh yeah. Now when I eat the meat, I just feel full. Yeah. And I and I can and I can tell the di I can differentiate between feeling full. And feeling good, you know, being so satisfied. the reason satisfied. for that satisfied. That's a good word. The reason for that is that your body produces hydrochloric acid um, to to actually break down that food, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when you eat meat, 
the body does not produce as much of that. And so therefore you feel full. I'm like, well, really good. This is not full, you know. But it's not good because your body, if you have the right acid balance in your body, you should not feel full for a long time. You really shouldn't. It doesn't mean that you should be eating every two hours, but you feel satisfied. That's a good word. So we have to really keep that in mind when it comes to feeling full versus feeling satisfied. And you're going to find, though, if you're so right, the more you do that, your body's going to adjust. Okay. Now, it used to be that we get up and have this big old process, right? That's what we have for breakfast most days now. Well, I just have living lemon water with, um, yeah. with strawberries. Lemon and strawberries. A lot of people have a problem. It's hard for us to evolve because we don't. We have a problem self-auditing ourselves yeah. or, or, or saying that, oh, I know I've been wrong with something. Let me adjust and change. Yeah. You know, I don't have much of a problem doing that because what it does to me, it identifies the problems that I have. You know, like, I've been, I changed my diet, I've been doing this, I've been doing that. Why am I still having these symptoms right. and that symptoms? It don't make sense. But now I look at this chart and I see that these little things that I'm doing are probably attributed to the problems that I haven't solved yet that's still persisting. And it gives me hope that I can take this, utilize it, and, and, and possibly eradicate those problems that I've been facing right. that I couldn't right. put my finger on before instead. There's a brother, I have to get his name. He said, he, he almost died in the 70s. His number went up to 800. I never oh, heard of him. No, no, it was 12. No, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he was a And he said, have a, have a cup and a half of broccoli every morning. Steaming the broccoli. Don't overcook it. Make sure the green is still there. Don't make it brown. Um, and so we started trying it, and what a difference we feel. So either it's broccoli, and maybe you can do the vegetable and egg if you want to do egg. Um, or a nice cooking. I really just do an apple or two. There you go. And that apple, like, I won't even be hungry. Mm -hmm. It's a, Just that apple, it's amazing what it does wow. just to keep my sugar under control and to keep me good throughout the day until I get to having to eat that salad or, or choose that protein. The results of wrong combinations, and some of us have experienced some of this stuff, you know, obviously. Uh, gas, bloating, you know, being bloated for, it's like, why am I feeling this way? Headaches, cramps, inflammation. The inflammation is used with a lot of people. Any pain that you have, that's what it is. You know, and a lot of people don't know it came from what they ate. You know, the chemicals in that drink and that bread, and monosodium sort of glutamate, whatever it may be. Uh, poor sleep. A lot of people can't sleep. Well, they stay up till 11 o'clock watching these shows and they're eating all the way on mm -hmm. ice cream and then they try to go to sleep. Body says, no, I need to go to sleep. Should have been asleep when the sun went down. But we're out of balance. Low energy. A lot of people experience that. <coughs> Digestive issues. You know, constipation is a huge one. Rashes. And we talk about inflammation. And it's not just the lady gets this male or female. We just
Even with any of our cookies and cream. Yeah. Yeah. So we really have to do you know. But I know exactly what you mean. You have to hold to it. That's the example we get from Jesus. Like we we all have to bear our cross. We have to walk yeah. that walk. We have to we have to do be the example for those lookers, for those people looking by who are not real sure or don't know or ambivalent yeah. or scared. You know, somebody has to be the sacrificial lamb. Yeah. And be that one that's doing these things so they can see that you will be accepted in the kingdom of heaven. Right. And not that never forgot. Yeah. But if you go with your evil ways, you'll just be buried in the dirt and life will go on. Yeah. Uh, just one example. Uh, hold on, one okay. The Amish, right? Mm. Yeah. They can do that. Okay? Because, like, okay, maybe they're all not living right. But for the most part, they have a society. Yeah. You mm. know, and it's like, look, we, this is all this is all going to take forever to get across the street because he's riding on a horse or whatever right. instead of in the car. Mm -hmm. And so, like, when, you know, if you're putting these things in their community or attacking them or doing it, they can, like, literally, you know, come at them, you know, legally or how because they're living it. And so we, we have to live it. And I, I was just going, just uh, thinking about, you know, being, being our own nation, like the nation of Islam, they got a diet plan. You feel what I'm saying? So the Moors, you feel what I'm saying? This is Islam. You feel what I'm saying? That that's just diet plan. That's just keeping in, in keeping in alignment with the Most High. You feel what I'm saying? So that's what we definitely this right here. You know, just having a sense. But then, like you said, you guys like, what you mean? I've been eating chicken. I'm good. Like, you gonna have a whole lot of that? Like, nah, chicken's the truth. Like, then you got me. I'm be like, well, chickens don't fly. You want to eat something that don't fly? See, this is the reason why your bitches don't get off the ground. See, just like that's why. Information from what you eat, you get information. Because if we're eating our plants, we're getting natural information downloaded into our system. As photosynthesis works, just like the melanin, they come together, to, to, like their powers combine, and we're, and we're well adjusted into our niche. That's right. And if you think about it, that's sort of that movie, The Matrix, right? Oh. Everything was done in code and numbers is being uploaded into our system. Um, and by the way, you guys know my sister wrote that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah we know. coming out the books. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, just because y'all got to keep going. 23 is supposed to have in a dream, a dream, and she's elaborating from where the dream took place. So, you know, okay. But, yeah. So, yeah, but, yeah, everything we eat is coded, right? Mm -hmm. And this is our last slide. What do we do to get some to eat to our stomach? Mm -hmm. uh, don't eat as comfort. Don't eat oh. for emotional upset, which is you in our community. We're under so much stress. We're all we're, we're always stressed. Though. Yeah, like we're, we are always in the state of stress. So how can we? That's well, hard. It's, 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 it's really right. discipline, hard yeah. discipline. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, even after a hard workout at the gym. Oh yeah, I can go get the ice cream now because I didn't ran five <laughs> miles <laughs> and up two hundred pounds. <laughs> and you reward yourself. And that's <laughs> And every step you took, you took oh, two steps back. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, only eat when you're hungry. <coughs> and most of us feel like I'm on the other side. <laughs> but that's water, like my brother said. Take a glass of water in between those meals. It takes four hours for whatever meal to get out of your system. And then you want to wait another hour before you drink it. And a half an hour before you drink it. Just to make sure you get full digestion. You know. And we're eating two meals a day. You know, who said you got to have these three meals a day? Eight o'clock, twelve o'clock, six o'clock. That's a crazy ever better. Um, hot and cold. Food. How do people like real hot food or real cold drinks and vice versa? It doesn't help your digestive system. It changes the enzymes in there. Anything you heat up. Over 120 degrees is going to change its natural molecular structure. You know, so the microwave and cooking, you should, you should just blanch it, steam it, but not, you know, cook greens for like four days. Mm -hmm. Like my mom used to do. We're going to have to <laughs> Get up, pick the clock. Mm -hmm. My father's father, maybe they'll cook it. <laughs> 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 it's good. It's now. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't drink while you're having a meal. You just Diluting the natural uh, acid in your stomach and your soul. It's very, very, very important. And this this um, is the reason why we eat in courses. Exactly. Just, okay. Exactly. 
Yeah. And I think the French still serve their food in courses. Mm -hmm. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. Are we going to time eight minutes? Oh, uh, we did until what? Okay. Um, anybody on, on, on the film or would like to get in contact with the African American Alzheimer's and Wellness Association, we have 1 800 489 6040. What if you could imagine you explain your phone in it? And uh, what's the number again? 1 800 489 6040. Happy to take. Uh, the call, leave a message if we can't pick up. Um, you know, we learn from you, you learn from us. It's all, it's all about evolving, and we don't know everything, we learn stuff just about every day. Because they're coming out with new stuff every day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you use us. And we're trying to stay focused on either creative food and nourishment and so forth. But to say that, We'll step into the video. And to add on to it real quick, um, I told my son, he's in Brooklyn, our son, um, Almar, and he uh, told me today, he said, you're going to be meeting with him, he said, please tell him to be yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's a more, and he says, you know, if we understand all the stuff that's caught up in this colon, that we have to constantly get out, and if we've been not treating it the best way, we got to first make sure you detox. Keep in mind, the first two weeks when you start a detox, you want to start first with vegetables. You'll learn this through Dr. Spira, which got it from Dr. Terry. The, the vegetables are actually the scrubbers. They're going to go in, they're going to kind of lift the food up, and they're going to get that out of your colon. And then it's the next two weeks, you want to get the eliminators in, which are your fruit. And that's going to really go in and just wash it out. A lot of people get sick because they think, oh, I just need to do is eat vegetables. And then you scrub up all this stuff in your system, you know, washing it up, not washing it out. Um, can I give anybody some water? I got some little water bottles on. I've got one here. Anybody want to give me one? Yeah, I'm going to give you one. I'll just hold off till you come back and we'll show the eight minutes. I'll be fast. <laughs> Any questions, Mike? <laughs> that water from anybody? Yeah. All right, so like, how would I, I would start like, first, I'm about to go to the mother. how do you do this? My baby mom's down to me and stuff. So, like, I don't know. But what would I start first? Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you said when you first sit down and eat a meal, don't wash, don't drink water. You know what I mean? So, just, just, just why would you be, you know, step first? Just okay. simple basic you feel what I'm saying? Stop right okay. You give it to me in the morning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll give it to you in the morning. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Food smoothie, you know, with the right combination. Uh, you might want to take, uh, if you won't be able to eat for another four or five hours, you want, after you have that food smoothie, maybe have some eggs and broccoli, steam, then you're out the door. Very light. Uh, we only do two meals a day, so whenever that second meal comes about, you know, maybe that's a little heavier. With the right combination of vegetables, maybe some salad, you know. I mean, that's a snack in between, though. Yeah. Fruit or something. Nuts, uh -huh. raisins. Um, I'm always having raisins. I'm having an apple, uh, small tangerines uh, in my bag in between because you get snacks and some more. Always have water. Just remember, though, never mix nuts with fruit. Yeah. So you never want to say, oh, I'm going to eat an apple and then I'm going to have this bag with the top. Why, why not? That happens. Different enzymes in the stomach, and so therefore it's just going to be fun. Right, so fruits is going to um, digest real fast. And Dr. Uh, Barbara O'Neill said, for example, if you have those nuts first, they're going to clog up what comes behind. You'll see that in this video. So you're going to get bloated. It takes nuts to digest. Right. You know you can do that I am so you know what uh, Dr. Sebi <laughs> said about corn? Because um, corn, the honorable life, yeah, the honorable life behind me said corn is animal feed, basically. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Pretty much it. Pretty much it. That's what they feed the cows, GMO corn. And the cows eat that <coughs> to get fat to go to slaughter. And we eat the cows. Yeah. So we're eating that GMO corn, GMO cows. Um, before we click that on, has anyone seen Food Inc? Okay. If you see what they do to the cows in Food Inc, you stop that meat. That's, that, that's another so reason why I go into it, is to get information from what you eat. Right. Because you're getting that. Yeah. Beer. <laughs> I think in that video too, you Monsanto is exposed. You know, yeah. Monsanto, yeah. Um, Monsanto um, is exposed, and those poor farmers—they they just ran them out of business. They mm -hmm. said, if you don't give us your seed and you take our seed, right. then we're just going to get rid of it. Well, we're not cows. No, you saw that mad cow in the oh, oh, back in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's when that impossible food is. What it did to the cows. But they're trying to do to us the same thing. We're trying to turn it to the zombies in the show. Right, right. on the show. Yeah, yeah. It's not food providing, and it's something you really want to experiment with, but it seems way too overwhelming and confusing. Fair use. If this sounds like you, then watch this video and I'm going to really basic guidelines to help make them send a show. Hi, guys. I'm Dr. Mona. I am making this video today all about food mining. And, you know, there's a lot to know about food combining, and, you know, there's details I could go into, but I think this would be, like, a really good intro video just to give you some of the basics. You know, I, I post a lot of this content in my Instagram stories or little tips, but I think you guys really want something a little more substantial you can refer back to, at least that's the feedback you've been giving me. So let's talk food combining and just kind of go over the basics. So when we're talking about food combining, there are different food categories. We've got fruits. We've got fat, we've got protein, and we've got starches. Now, some foods obviously have both protein and fat, or some foods, you know, are starch, but they also contain a little bit, a little bit of protein. That's okay. When we're talking about these different food categories, what I want you to remember is we're thinking about how they're digested in your stomach. I want you to picture your GI tract kind of like a conveyor belt or like train tracks. So if there's one thing in front, nothing else behind it can pass. So the order in which you eat your food, like let's say your food is all the different little cars or trains on it, really matters. So, for example, if you eat something that's best digested really slow, let's just say it takes hours to digest, and then right after you eat something that's digested really quickly, this one's going to be taking its time through your GI tract, and this food is just going to like speed up, they're going to interact, they're going to just kind of cause chaos in your stomach, you're going to feel that bloating this and that those bubbles and that gash and that popping, just all the bad stuff. And that's when you're going to feel really tired. Like that feeling can really drop your energy. So it's really important to eat food that digests the most quickly first and then, you know, it's follow away in order of what, what else takes, you know, longer to digest. If you've ever watched my content, you've heard me always say eat fruit in the morning on an empty stomach and that's because fruit is digested so quickly. It takes about 20 minutes to digest and you really shouldn't eat fruit after any other meal. Because it's digested so quickly, if you eat it after like a starch or a protein, it's going to get backed up in your stomach and it's going to cause a lot of bloating. This is why I always stress have fruit in the morning for breakfast before you eat anything else because I'm trying to simplify it for you. You know, I don't want you guys to have to go through your day, especially if you're starting out and think like, how many hours of events have I eaten this? Can I have fruit? So just as a good easy rule, have fruit in the morning. You know, that way you'll limit your sugar intake anyway. This is also a good tip to think about when you're at a restaurant or even at home and you think that fruit for a healthy dessert is healthy. Actually, not which breaks my heart a little because I love fruit and I don't want to make it difficult for you, but I would really avoid fruit after meals. Stick with it in the morning and with a green smoothie and you're good to go. So now let's talk about what else is digested after that. Now we've got starches. So I'm talking about things. pasta, rice, quinoa, bread. All that starchy stuff, you can look it up. <laughs> and even starchy vegetables like potatoes, these take about two hours to digest. So I would really recommend having these as like your middle meal of the day. I like to break it up as like one food group for breakfast, one for lunch, and one for dinner. So you can combine all different starches together. They combine well together. So you could have like, you know, potatoes and some quinoa, or you could have some cut squash with some brown rice. Vegetables go with anything. That's another thing to keep in mind. Vegetables are a free for all, so you could have, you know, steamed veggies with rice. Um, you could have some toast. And anything you could have, like in the grain category, just make sure you have. I'll make sure I like put 
post a link or something under this video to give you like little categories of what's the grade so you can miss any of those. So grades take about two hours to digest. Now, when you want to have protein, protein takes about four hours to digest. The biggest no-no is combining a starch and a protein, okay? I want to just give you this little example. When you eat a protein, your body releases certain gastric enzymes that make it acidic. That's what you need to break down protein. You can look this up. This is a fact. I mean, you need an acidic environment for protein. When you eat starches, they release a different kind of enzyme, which makes the environment alkaline. So think about when you have a positive and a negative, and they combine. Obviously, it becomes neutral. This is the same thing for you have an acid environment and an alkaline environment. They neutralize each other out. Then all the food just doesn't get digested at all. The protein doesn't get digested. The starch doesn't get digested. It starts to putrefy in your stomach, which basically means rot. And then it just ends up causing, you know, a bacteria environment. This is where more yeast and fungus and bacteria can grow. This makes the whole environment more acidic, and this can lead to like even like lead to toxins and cancer, and you know, lead you to get bloated. So I know it seems like. Oh, it's not the end of the world if I have, you know, protein and starch. But I really highly recommend looking into this. This is like years and years of research and studies for medicine. Definitely separate these two groups. So after you have your grades, when you go to dinner, this is when you want to have your protein. So really what you're doing is when you wake up, you start at light and moving to heavy. Um, you've got your grades for lunch, you're going to have your protein. This, this is included in animal or plant-based protein, whether or not you're vegan. So if you're having like a piece of fish, if you're having tofu, if you're having beans, if you're having lentils, all of that falls under the protein category. Now fruit obviously doesn't combine with anything. Vegetables combine with everything. So if you want to have a smoothie in the morning with some fruit, like an apple, you want to have some celery, some spinach, some greens, perfect. That's great. If you want to have some vegetables with your lunch, let's say you have like a stir fried veggie with rice, or pasta with vegetables on top, or you know, a butternut squash, and you want to have some quinoa on the side. Like anything you want, all the veggies go with everything. And that's also a great idea for dinner. If you have like a protein with a mixed green salad, or some seed vegetables, it's just good to have like a good, you know, food that pairs all with everything. Now last, let's talk about fats. So fats, again, nothing with fruit, and we're going to leave fruit alone. They combine okay with protein, but very, very well with starches. So this is also going to give you some more options here. So an amazing meal would be like an avocado on toast. Because you've got avocado, which is a fat. Even though it's technically a fruit, it's a fat when it comes to food combining. So you've got a fat on top of the starch. Or if you want to put an avocado into like a brown rice bowl with a bunch of vegetables, it's an amazing dish. Highly recommend it. You could add Coconut oil to different fats when you're like, you know, say you're cooking rice and you want to like even fry it a little bit, you could add some coconut oil. Fats are okay with protein. I, you know, if you want to have a little bit of oil with your salad and you're having like, you know, a piece of fish or some tofu or some tempeh, that's okay, but try to avoid mixing it too much. This might get a little confusing throughout the day when you don't know what to eat, what time to eat it. So what I recommend, you could stick to all grains all day and then all proteins the next day. Just have your fruit in the morning and just you know, maybe one day you could do a lot of beans and you could do like some tempeh or some tofu or some fish. Or another day you could do like some brown rice for lunch, some pasta for dinner. Or just stick with your starches for lunch and your proteins for dinner. Now, if in that middle time you get hungry between, you know, eating a starch and a protein, there's some food that's just combined well with everything you could have. So you could have a fat. So something like chia seed pudding, which is so easy to make. You just add almond milk to chia seed put it in the fridge overnight and you stop putting it in the morning. Pretty easy. Um, you could have a smoothie with some chia seeds and coconut oil and like some spinach and ice. You could have a green juice, a green salad. Remember, vegetables are like your free-for-all, so you can have them at any time of day. Veggie stick salad. Like, obviously you need to eat more than just vegetables, but I just mean as the transition in between meals. Those are the basics. That's what I would stick with at first. If it ever gets too confusing, you know, beat yourself up over it. But these are the kind of basics to go by. If you like this video, please comment, like, let me know how you feel. I'd love to hear from you. And I would love you to subscribe to my page. Let me know what else you guys want me to post content on. And I hope you enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Uh, what she said is, is, is right on it. And stuff is tough, too. <laughs> Uh, I had to in my head like, don't move. No. Uh -huh. <laughs>
I was just, I'm just over here sad. <laughs> because everywhere you go, they mix the protein with the starches. <laughs> everywhere you go, and they make it cheaper for you if you do it that way. <laughs> so it's cost effective to kill yourself. Right. And it's like, enjoy. They give it to you with a smile and enjoy. I, mean, I really challenge you to try it. You're going to find out that you're going to feel better. You're going to you're going to look better, you're, you're going to, your attitude is going to be better. So I work with the community. I mean, I have 50 some clients that these are usually single mothers in our community struggling. That's why my goal is to show them a change of diet and I guarantee you're going to make a difference, you're going to make different decisions that will be better for you. It's just going to change the whole world. So what we put in, this is definitely a means to interrupt frequency. Yeah. 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 So give it a try. Maybe next time we come together, you can say, hey, this really works. If you have to have bread, um, sourdough would be the best if you had to have it. Um, there's a really nice sourdough that we get from Bexley uh, Market. The, 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 Right on Cassidy. It's called um, Cassidy Natural Market. Yeah. Co op. And uh, yeah, Co op, and they have a nice little sourdough there that you get every now and then. Yeah. Well, I am a lot. So I, so I can eat a sandwich as long as I got leafy greens in between. Am I eating it right? Or you don't want to mix?
You know what I mean? So they try to turn their more positive. They want those organs, and it's real. That's a whole market. Oh, yeah. Melatonin? How do you think they did that? You know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? Melatonin can only be made in the lab. It has to be extracted. So they extract that stuff and put it on the counters. And, 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 and you know, even even something like even something like outside of the body, um, something that's not so small, but right here in our in our uh, I guess our sphere of presence and existence. When you go on a boat and you go outside of U.S. waters or American waters and you turn back, you will see this black cloud. <laughs> I, you know what? You will I see this black you. cloud surrounding. The mainland. You coming back in, you will you'll be able to see the the, the, the foil waters. You know you'll be able to see fish uh, swimming around and swimming. The closer you get to the American shores, you'll see these uh, concrete stumps out where I guess they're extracting oil maybe. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the closer you get, you'll see this cloud of smoke. And, and you know it, it might be my imagination because I know I got a cartoon like imagination. But in that cloud of smoke, you can just see. Like <laughs> Welcome to America. But all jokes aside, in all, in all serious, you can just see a cloud of, of this dark wow. matter coming, and that's how you know visually that you into you're into American waters, the United States uh, internet of waters. So it's like it is in this country. It's, like, it's just a cesspool of of Dr. Moreau's island or something. Oh, mm -hmm. we can take charge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because when you ask someone to come from like Bosnia or, you know, like Uganda, when they come here, they see rainbows and they see art and they see money falling. Like, it depends on how you are here. Like, yeah. your perception of life comes from within, your thoughts, with that we can put into your body, but like you live in a third world country. We've seen how third world lives. We've seen it. It's like this, like, boy, you will never be better than it. <laughs> but we have seen, though, how, like, um, to attest to that, though, how in, 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 like, in South America, the junk food and stuff like that. It's a little more expensive just going to the grocery mm -hmm. store. So it's not like here where you can just get a bag of chips and all stuff, a dollar, not drinks for the six pack of, you know, any kind of soda for, you know, two fifty and stuff like you couldn't it wasn't like that. So wow. there's something going on. But on the bright side, you know, we have opportunity. Yeah. Even in, in the midst of this, we have the freedom to speak and do what sure. we need to do to clean ourselves up. So, you know, that's a blessing. And um do want to go ahead and, and close things out without further ado. If anybody has anything else to say, uh, we're just going to go ahead with the reading of the proclamations. Um, do, you, do you want to go ahead and start? And I'll just finish up. I have. Oh, you? I got okay, you. okay, cool. All right. All right, I got the divine warning. Divine warning, okay. <clears throat> the divine warning by the prophet for the nations. The citizens of all free national governments, according to the national constitution, are all of one family bearing one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name in their constitutional governance are classes at, are classes as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments to the, that the citizens care to bestow upon them. And it is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of the free national government and cling to the names and the principles that delude to slavery. I, the prophet, was prepared by the great God Allah to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to the state of mind of their forefathers, divine and national principles, that they will be law abiders and receivers and receive their divine right as citizens according to the free national constitution that was prepared for all free national beings. They are, all, they are to claim their own free national name and religion. There is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and of the earth, and it comes only through the connection of the Morris Divine National Movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world. And through it, 
they and their children can receive their divine rights unmolested by other citizens that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state's government and not under a granted privilege as has been the existing condition for many generations. You doubt, you doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people. Go to those who know law, and in, in the city halls, and among the officials in your government, and ask them under an intelligent tone, and they will be glad to render you a favorable reply. For they are glad to see me bring you out of the darkness into the light. Money doesn't make the man. It's free national standards and power that makes a man a nation and a nation. The wealth and all the wealth of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce belong to the citizens alone alone without your national citizenship. By name and principle, you have no true wealth, and I am hereby calling on all true citizens that send for a national free government. I'm sorry, that stand for a national free government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my great missionary work because I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of government. I am depending on your support to give them back to the constitutional fold again that they will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. I love my people, and I desire their unity and mine back to their own national and divine standard, because day by day they have been violating the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. If Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national names and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America, it is no more than a right that the law should be enforced upon all other American citizens alike. In all other governments, when a man is born and raised, they, they, and raised there and asked for his national descent name, and if he fails to give it, he is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by, the, by name and principle, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name. Because they place their trust upon issue and names formed by their forefathers. The word Negro deludes in the Latin language to the word nigger. The same word, the, the same as the word color deludes to anything that is painted, varnished, or dyed. And every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers because honoring thy fathers and thy mothers, your days will be lengthening upon this earth. These names have never been recognized by any true American citizen to this day. Though your free national name you are known and recognized by all nations. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that are recognized by the said national government in which they live. The 14th and 15th Amendments brought the North and South in units, placing the Southerners who were at that time without power with the constitutional body of power. At that time, I'm sorry, and at that time, 1865, free national constitutional law that was enforced since 1774 declared all men equal and free. And if all men are declared to, by the national free, uh, free national constitution to be free and equal, since that constitution has never been changed, there is no need for the application of the 14th and 15th amendments for the salvation of our people and citizens. So, there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which was lost, and that is through the above statement. Then the lion and the lamb can lay down together in yonder hills, and neither will be harmed, because love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice will be reigning this land. 
In those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world. But if, it, if the above principles are not carried out by the citizens and my people in this government, the worst is yet to come, because the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people, and this great sin must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquakes, disease, etc. And I, the prophet, do hereby believe that this administration of the government being more wisely prepared by more genius citizens that believe in their free national constitution and laws and through the help of such classes of citizens, I, the prophet, truly believe that my people will find the true and divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving carnal customs and mere, merely ideas of men that have never done them any good but have always harmed them. So, I, the prophet, am hereby calling aloud to a divine plea to all true American citizens to help me to remove this great sin which has been committed and, has, and is being practiced by my people in the United States of America because they know it is not the true and divine way and without understanding they have fallen from their true light into utter darkness of sin and there is not a nation on earth today that will recognize them socially, religiously, politically, or economically, etc. In their present condition of their endeavorments in which they themselves try to force upon the civilized world, they will not refrain from their simple ways of action and their deeds that brought Jim Crowism, segregation, and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. And they fought the Southerners for all these great misuses that, uh, but I have traveled to the South and I have examined conditions there. And it is the works of my people continuously practicing the things which bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to any nation that lived the life. I am hereby calling on all true Americans for moral support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of the darkness into marvelous life. From the prophet, April 19, 1935. Islam, and then you see in that, um, we don't place blame within anyone because we know that we have the power to, to alter our reality, but to, to um, redeem ourselves. As always, I'm gonna read these three writs uh, really quickly. Uh, to the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America, Islam, this is the instruction from your prophet, Noble Drali. Be faithful unto your forefathers' divine and national creed that you will be blessed for your good deeds that you sow in the flesh. A lot of the one that judges the world and his judgment is on now, but the weak can comprehend it not. The end of time is drawing near, so Allah says to his divine prophet, I know who draw Ali, and that is why many hearts have been turned to stone and many eyes, many have eyes to see, but cannot see, ears to hear, but cannot hear, lest they will be confounded of their sins. These are the trying hours now, dear Moors, and every evil spirit is moving, and they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation that has been laid and to cause confusion in the minds of the ones that do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah and the spirit of your forefathers, you will fear not what you see or hear, but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your prophet. Watch your enemies, dear Moors. Your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet and ridicule him to the very lowest and the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temples. Act accordingly and Allah will bless you for your good work. Peace, your divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali. This is a prophet warns all Muslims to be read at every meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must end all radical speeches while at work in their homes or in the streets. We are for peace and not destruction. Stop flashing your cards at Europeans, it causes confusion. Remember your card is for your salvation. Failure to obey these orders will be a severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings towards the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the law as laid down to them by their prophet. They lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in their card and button, cease wearing their turban and bed, and return to the state where I, the prophet, find you. 
This is a holy and divine movement founded by the Prophet Noble Drew Ali. And if the Prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The Prophet, therefore, is sending out the divine plea to all Moorish Americans that they must do their part in protecting the Prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the Prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Peace, Noble Drew Ali, uh, when he's telling us to uh, refrain from radical speeches and um, anti-government talk, I was speaking to the Supreme Grand Chief last year and just asking him, like, where's our army, you know? And he said, the United States Army, the Navy, you know, is to serve us just like they do all nationalities. We're to clean ourselves up, to pick ourselves up and to act accordingly, and they're to do their job, you know? So we're not against them. You know, they have something, that, I mean, excuse me, they have a job to do that's supposed to protect us. Um, this is to be proclaimed at every meeting, Islam, I'm glad to know that I have a few faithful Moors among you, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me in the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation that claim that I was only a joke and unreal. But now, since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens, they are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so that they may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful moors that attribute to the movement of up and uplifting funds, the ones that pay their dues, divine respect to me, and the movement that will be remembered. That is why I am calling upon all faithful moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine movement. I need finance and I need badly. Never before have I needed finance so badly as I do at present, so I can shove aside the discord that is facing this nation. It comes from jealousy because of my fame and ability. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being head. It has been proven by my works, which I have performed in the past few years. Prophet Noble Drew Ali, when he wrote this, there was a <clears throat> an issue in Detroit. There was a, a sheet of... Uh, Okay, Loma is back. Yes, I forgot for a second. And um, his temple was very popular. He had a lot of members, and he was bringing in a lot of money at that time. I believe around it was in the upper thousand, maybe ten thousand a month, which at that time would have, you know, he was a millionaire basically. And he, once that that type of money started coming in, you know, he was not trying to give it to the home office. You know, to distribute it, give, you know, give its portion to the temple. And um, there was even an instance where the prophet had came to Detroit, and he, in the meeting, was telling everybody, you don't need to follow him, <laughs> you know, because he felt confident in himself and, you know, didn't even have regard for the person who created, created the movement and the businesses that they had coming in because it was very um, successful. And so at that point in time, and he was speaking on that issue, and you still have things like that going on day, all right? And when the prophet came into this country, okay, he was actually, there were people who were already expecting him to be here, you know, whether they were government officials or, you know, very rich individuals, people who control society, they already knew about him and knew what he was doing, okay? So this thing was very real, and even those people at that time who you know, like he said, ridiculed him or tried to usurp the power from the movement. They found out themselves that it was legit, and he, had, excuse me, he had to get the head for it to work. So I just, um, that's really all. Uh, but today, if anybody has any other questions or anything to speak on, um, we'll go ahead and go into closing of the meeting. Um, just go ahead and my closing prayer. I'm going to repeat after me a lot. Bind our hearts and minds back to our ancient forefathers, divine freedom principles. We ask this in thy holy name and the seven Elohim. Amen. 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 That's it. I know uh, you were saying something about the temple or something. I went on talking maybe about the history. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you, and you touched on it. The money that we put in 